Hello, and welcome to How You Can Benefit from an Extraordinary Mindset. I'm Michelle Risa, your host. Mindset is all the rage these days, from Main Street to Wall Street. Why? Because the benefits are just so huge. From reducing stress to more energy and better health to better decision making and actually better communication uh, in both personal and professional relationships and so much more. So I've been helping people access these benefits as CEO and founder of Collaborative Solutions. And I help my clients see themselves differently and see the world differently. And by doing that, they in fact create a different legacy and in fact a legacy the world needs. So today we will be digging into the beauty and magic of mindset. And specifically, our show today will be how you can benefit from the extraordinary mindset of Jazz Jennings and Mr. Martinez, who um, is extraordinary. So we've, we've chosen two very young um, activists. Uh, let me now invite my colleague, Dr. Stephen Hobbs, to join me. Stephen, please come and let's explore this together. How are you? I am well, Michelle. Thanks for having me. And uh, again, it's that distance, but that's the beauty of technology. <laughs> no, matter where so, we, no matter where we are in the world, here we are. Oh, for sure. We're connected. <laughs> yeah. The technology story, I think, is going to play itself out with these uh, young activists that we're going to be sharing uh, some insights about. But as a, a way of introducing myself, is Please. I, I guide managers and leaders to become natural educators to deliver extraordinary experiences. And I've always been fascinated about what does it mean to be a manager leader and how do you grow that mindset and then how do you then educate others to grow their mindset and to maintain the curiosity of developing your mindset and that's what brought me to uh, the shows here and so um, thank you for having me my pleasure my pleasure always welcome your wisdom your insights and obviously your breadth of experience. So thank you for joining me. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me just quickly give everyone a foundation and answer the question, what is mindset, All right? There's fixed mindset, which as the word suggests, uh, is in, inborn and fixed and unchangeable. So whatever we're born with, that's what we've got. And there are also those who believe in a growth mindset which as that word suggests, it's changeable, able to be strengthened, developed through commitment and of course some hard work, um, like any new skill. Yes, like any new skill. You know, tennis, <laughs> swimming, what have you. Um, and what science is proving is that we have the stimuli on the outside world and there's actually a gap between this stimuli and our reaction to it. In fact, as we increase that gap, we can change our reaction to an actual conscious response. And so choose how we want to respond to life. You know, all too frequently we're trying to change life, but our power lies in our response to it. Right? And, um, I know that's easier said than done, but again, it's possible, very, very possible and powerful. So for this show, again, we've chosen Jazz Jennings and Chutez Caught Martinez, right? And um, I'm going to just jump into Jazz Jennings, I believe. Okay? Yes. Um, yes. Let me 
share a little bit about her extraordinary mindset. Um, she identifies herself as a transgender woman. She uh, has a reality TV, she is a reality TV personality, um, and it's called I Am Jazz on the Learning Channel. And she is an LGBT rights activist, and in fact, sensed um, her female identity um, as early as the age of five, as five. So um, I'd love to hear, we found a clip of her speaking about this, so let's take a listen to her own words about how she developed this extraordinary mindset. It's honestly so important to me to be able to create change because I feel like this world needs a lot of change. And being able to play my part in this big movement of making a difference is just so important to me. And I want to be able to continue spreading my message to humanity that we just all need to be our authentic selves and not care what other people think. All that matters is self-perception. As long as you love and value yourself, then it doesn't matter what anyone else says. Rather amazing, yes? creating this mindset of, uh, goodness, um, self-acceptance, right, which, which is so core to our ability, as she says, to not care about what other people think, so that she, as she says, live authentically, right, and now can play her part in this movement. Anything you'd like to add that's really touched your heart? Well, it, it's living authentically. Like the, the storyline, the, the thread there for her, right? It, it, it's, it's just bravo. It just, it just speaks so eloquently about the importance of that in our lives. And, and it can be challenging to live authentically, but um, she's doing it. I have a quote that I'd like to share in addition. She says, in life, Everything is about attitude and perspective. Even though my vagina falling apart was the hardest thing I ever experienced, I knew that one day I would be fully healed and recovered. I had to adopt the mindset of my future self and know in my heart that everything would be okay. Isn't, isn't that great? Uh, the, the phrase that I'll pick up on is, Adopting the mindset of my future self. We, we hear the phrase act as if. Right. I use a word called from word, which is thinking from the future to the present. So I use the word from word. I like making up words. <laughs> you do, and they're wonderful. Yeah. And to be able to be in that place of that future self and bringing it into what it is that you're doing today that that there's strength there and again the, the quote speaks to it all right because it's a very authentic very, <laughs> quote yes. in terms of what happened for her and um i i believe that this notion to act as if to um look at what's happening in the future and bringing it into the present is a powerful way to influence your mindset especially that growth mindset and what you manifest, I mean, right, to be so clear, right, what the future will be and live it right now, right? And literally, in sh you know, th that clarity, as she says, you know, the positive out, yes, the, yes, the positive thought. So um, a beautiful idea that we would like, I think, and, and I'll say is in life, everything is about attitude and perspective is, I think, something also to take from the wisdom that she shared. So I know in preparation for this show, we found an, um, this other wonderful um, activist, Stephen. Can you introduce us to him? Oh, for sure. Uh, this is uh, Shutez Clark Martinez. And um, I didn't really know anything about him. I happened to find um, a link, and I went exploring, and I went, oh, th this is a really interesting young man. And young man, 19. Similar, similar to where Jazz is, 1918, right? Uh, as we get to know them through their clips and their stories. But a little bit about his background, because I think it's important to understand where he came from. He has an Aztec background, and so there's the importance of 
um, that culture and the elders and what his father has done for him and with him. And he's also the youth director of Earth Guardians, mm. which is a program, um, a more an organization that his mother actually created. So he's like a second generation in that uh, Earth Guardians. And he has spoken on world stages starting at the age of six. So you mentioned jazz at five years and we've got uh, Shutes Kat talking at six years. So starting some really early um, activism and, Again, we have to appreciate the mindset uh, that goes with that. And one of the ways for us to appreciate that is if you listen to this clip and, and watch what uh, is going on and truly just digest it, I think you will see an amazing mindset here. Okay, let's, let's do that. Thank you. When I was nine, I worked to ban the use of pesticides in, in all public parks in Boulder, Colorado. I'm one of 21 youth that are suing the federal government for failure to act on climate change. Until every pipeline has been shut down. You may be the youngest person on our show. I've given TED Talks around the country. I've spoken at the United Nations. We need to reconnect with the Earth and end this mindset that we have that we can take whatever we want without ever giving back. If I play at a music festival for 50,000 people, those people won't all sit there and watch me give a keynote speech about climate change. But they will listen to a song that has a deeper message that maybe some of them will get it, maybe them, no, some of them won't, but all of them are feeling it subconsciously. So Michelle, what was it that you picked up out of that clip that is important for us to go, ah? Though, of course, him speaking at the UN and, and, and his actions to prevent pesticides being poisoning us are all things that touch me. I'd like to actually verbalize his suggesting that a song has a deeper message than a lecture. Because for me, Stephen, that exemplifies the new paradigm. It's not only out of, you know, we've, we're accustomed to being lectured to, right? And this generation, I think, more so understands how, and I'll say it this way, to bypass the logical mind, lecture, learning. Music and the arts impacts us in a much deeper way, and I will say, in the heart, at a cellular level. And so, yes, he's absolutely right that had he tried to lecture to those 50,000 people, <laughs> he would have been far less effective than if clearly he was by using his music. So that, I think, is a powerful, powerful message to all of us. Oh, for sure. He, and he um, leans into the world of hip hop music. And um, there's other clips of him singing his songs and reading poetry and all that. And again, I would encourage people to look up Shutes Pop Martinez and, um, and uh, go explore where he's coming from. But there's um, an album here from a brain thought perspective, I think that's important for us. And um, if you want change, the song has to be deeper, the song has to be a deeper message than the lecture, which is, I'm repeating what you said, Michelle, because I think it's a good brain thought. It's something to keep in the forefront. Yeah. If you want to sing from stage when you're doing a presentation, go for it. I've sung from stage um, and had fun with it, so I can appreciate how important music is to what's going on. And there's a quote, this excellent quote that he shared with us through um, one of those meme pictures. And I'd just like to uh, read it for you. The biggest challenge we face is shifting human consciousness, not saving the planet. Mm. That planet doesn't need saving. We do. <laughs> right? Now, I know we didn't actually put the explanation mark in the we do, but I'm going to put the we do with the explanation mark. Right. So I think that, that that's an important element. So I, I thank Sh Shev Tukat for uh, the work that he does, um, and uh, I wish him well on his continued journey to do so. Right. And I think that quote, Stephen, once again underscores the importance of the part we each play. 
You know, we're accustomed in the old paradigm to be doing and fixing, and no doubt that's part of what we need to do. However, the source of all that action starts with us. Right? So when we shift our consciousness, then all of our actions reflect that shift. Right? That's what mm -hmm. I, I love yes. about that, that quote. Yeah, for sure, Michelle, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I'd like to give everyone a practical tool to shift their um, mindset. It's a slightly challenging mudra, but it's you put the two index fingers together. I'm sorry, the knuckles of the index finger together, the tips of the middle finger, and the tips of the thumb. So it's a little challenging, but the thumb tips are together, the knuckles of the index, <laughs> yes, and the middle fingers, and the other two fingers are inside your um, fist, and it's, it's actually at your heart center. And so we're just going to breathe long and deep, right? And I think that will suffice. And so this, by the way, um, according to my teacher, Yogi Bhajan, who while he was on the planet was master of Kundalini Yoga, shared with us that Buddha actually shared this meditation with his disciples to, in fact, calm the mind. Yes, mm. calm the mind. Um, he actually, I think, used the word tranquilize, y Yogi Bhajan said, <laughs> but we'll, we'll just use calm. All right, so here we go. And it's just inhaling and exhaling. And your eyes are actually gazing at the tip of your nose. They're nine-tenths closed, one-tenth open. It only needs to be done for three minutes, so inhale. And exhale. And there can be a silent mantra. My favorite is Wahe Guru, but we'll all be doing it silently. Inhale. And exhale. Deepen the breath each time, a deeper inhale. And totally exhale, saying to yourself, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru. Wow, beyond description is this journey from Gu darkness to Ru light. Just a few more. Deeply inhale. And please exhale completely, possibly considering pulling in your navel at the very end of that exhale. And last cycle, inhale. And please exhale. And please relax. Michelle, I got to always say when we do some of these uh, meditations, no, no, with all these meditations, not some of them, all these meditations, I really like the, the notion of going into that deep breath because it just reminds me, hang on a minute, keep taking some deep breaths each day. <laughs> That's going to help the mindset as well. Right? Absolutely. Actually, within a minute or maybe even less, right? Yeah. As well as heart coherence, it shifts literally our mind, our nervous system strengthens our immune system, literally recalibrates, slows everything down, brings us into balance. So it may seem so simple, but I would really offer that it's quite powerful and, sure. and effective. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, well, if, if, I, if I may, I'd like to share um, two quick stories because of the youth activism um, one is, in my own way, when I was younger, I took up an activist role, and it was about children and play. <laughs> and I happened to be traveling around the world doing that trip that was supposed to go for six months, came back four years later. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of trip, okay? Lovely. 
<laughs> and I was always looking at children's and playgrounds and how children are playing on playgrounds because I wanted to do something that would help the young people to understand this word, recreate, recreation, recreation. Mm. And that was always in my background. It still is to this day, but it, it influenced me in a great way. So it's like the same things that those young people that we, we've talked about, um, jazz and, and shoe test pot in terms of what influenced them and what they've taken up and, and shared out. But the other quick story I'd like to share is I also spent time with the International Red Cross. And that's the group that deals with war situations, working with both sides, dealing with something called the Geneva Conventions and being able to deal with the prisoners of war and all that. I wasn't in that element. I was more in the relief operations, making sure we were um, getting the relief um, material into the, the war zone where people were being greatly affected. But there's something that they gave me that I've hooked on to, I've woven into my life, and it was these three words, patience, flexibility, and discretion. Hmm. And they influenced my mindset, just like I would say that um, Shutas Kaur would say, the music, his hip hop music, is in there, is influencing his message. The, um, the authentic way that Jazz is going about doing her life and speaking from that place, they would have their own words. Mine happened to be patience, flexibility, and discretion. So I just like to share that. I, you know, I had a small little bit of activism when I was younger, <laughs> and, I, and I got some, you know, some insights from some big world situations as well. So I just thought that that might add a little bit to that growth mindset that we're talking about here. Yeah, not, not a small addition. Thank you for that very, very much. So um, I would love to now add a call to action so we can not just be inspired by these wonderful young activists, but participate as well. Yes? What, what legacy will I leave? And what can I do today? Right? And um, one suggestion I'd like to make is for everyone to surround themselves with people that match their destined mindset. Right? There's something, as we know, right? We are deeply influenced by those, we, those people we spend time with. Yes? Um, I'd like to actually share something I found which says, want to upgrade your money and success mindset? Start hanging out with people that are very successful and seem to have an abundance of money flowing their way at any time. It's easier to adapt a new mindset when you see that is, it is already working for other people. And you have the opportunity then to learn how they think and how their daily habits, underscore, 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 um, to match their mindset. Again, it's one to envision as we're talking, and then the small steps, and it truly will multiply and exponentially right, build with the new habits that we take. For sure. But, yeah, yeah. And the only other, if I can just add one more really quickly, to jump out of our comfort zone. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I know. We don't want to do that very often, but, you know, when the universe sometimes kicks us into or out of, excuse me, our comfort zone, as much as we may be going, um, com uh, struggling with it, it's a blessing. Because, again, I'll, yeah, I did some uh, research on it, and when we have no other choice, you know, we are kicked outside of our comfort zone, we have to rise to the occasion. Right? We have to upgrade our mindset. And it becomes a necessity to survive. And I, I love this because I love looking at what we think is the negative or bad things that happen as truly gifts. And I appreciate it's not easy, right, when, when it's feeling painful. However, maybe remembering this that when we're out of our comfort zone, there's much more than meets the eye, right? A gift that we may not see or feel, but as we open to this idea, we may in fact feel it and see it. 
Yes. Yeah. What would you, what would add you like to, to add? That, yes, please. Yeah. If, there's three words. If you write them down on a, a piece of paper, it's learn, decide, action. Our decisions are made on what we learn and the actions come out of the decisions. Right. But think of it this way. Learning and action, you can flip them around. The action you've taken from the decisions give you the learning and you can flip them around. So what it is, it's sort of like learning action, learn action or action learning around your decisions. And if you keep that forefront and you know that the decisions are going to be made from the learning and the action I'm going to take and of the action that I took, what's the learning that I take from that? <laughs> you know, it, it has a circular flavor to it, but it's about what's called reflection in action and reflection on action. Mm. And those two elements, that reflection in and on, will influence your extraordinary mindset. Thank you for that. So let's invite everyone to join us on Facebook, right, at www.facebook.com forward slash collaborative solutions dot global forward slash. We post only what we hope is meaningful and valuable in your life. We're not concerned about shares or likes, but we really hope um, to it, create together an environment where we show up as our best, um, show up with transparency, and we invite everyone to come and play with us and experience it together. So thank you, Stephen, so very, very much for all of who you are and what you share and your, again, I love your humor <laughs> as well as your wisdom. So thank you for joining me and let me Thank everyone um, for joining us today. Um, until next time. <laughs> <laughs>